All right, it's uh, Benjamin Douglas Ray here with another edition of Sustainability Live. As you can see, we're turning into Sustainable Cannabis TV because there's been so much interest in sustainability in cannabis and the opportunities coming throughout 2021 are tremendous for any cannabis company to be responsible and take the lead on this. So what I'm gonna finish up here with uh, looking back on last year and as a projection for looking into 2021 regarding packaging and packaging waste. And I'm gonna talk about this related to the cannabis industry, but you can relate it to any industry that you're in. So first of all, sustainability really isn't a trend anymore. I mean, it's what's expected. And that's not just by millennials, it's by many people and it's growing every single day. So it's a good thing when a company is sustainable and being sustainable and acting sustainable and eco and green and organic, all these things are starting to come to play now. And it's really been pushed to the to the forefront uh, through COVID. And there are numerous reasons to that that we'll go into uh, another time uh, throughout the next month here. By the way, we've got some amazing speakers. We've got uh, 25 speakers lined up over the next 25 days, Monday through Friday. And on uh, Monday, I'll publish a schedule so you can put that on your calendar. But when I talk about sustainability, and when most people think about sustainability, what they think about is just recycle or less waste or something like that. And it's normally less plastic and more paper. And that's true. Through all of this, less plastic is better. Now, for any of those out of you out there that are in the plastics industry, I know you're working on this too. And there are a lot of great things happening traditionally with companies that are traditionally doing just mass plastic and ways that they're looking to push things forward. This week, we're going to explore some of those companies actually on Monday that are doing a good job at transitioning and offering, you know, other other products to go along with traditional plastics, um, you know, that, that we can't do much about, especially the plastics that can't be uh, recycled. So another thing that we worked on this year at Tread Global was eliminating the secondary package. So I talked about that a lot this year, you know, where you have a box and you have a product inside. We're gonna see less of that. We're gonna see less secondary packaging. And, you know, prior to this, or even in some industries, many industries still, the box is seen as premium. So if you look at some alcohol brands, let's say high-end scotch, let's say you look at beauty products, they're gonna have an outside box on them, but it, and, they, and they command more of a price, but that doesn't mean that the quality of the product is any better. And when you take the bottle out, well, the branding is still on there just the same. And what happens to that box? It's usually a, a not so, um, you know, inexpensive cardboard box or paper box that you're paying for that goes straight into the trash. That's just what happens. We all know it. Like I've got bottles around here, you know, beauty products. We've got alcohol. We've got so many products, toys, everything that I can think of, medications, they came in a secondary box and those boxes are somewhere in a landfill or in a gutter or in a trash. So that's something we're going to see less of is secondary packaging. So the main idea here in kind of creating a circular economy is really to have materialistic minimalism. And what that means is that we're not taking new products. We're not creating new products just to throw them away or new boxes just to throw them away. So what that would be traditionally would be use, reuse, recycle, process, design, and produce. So that circular economy is really what we're trying to strive for when we're thinking about producing less waste. Now, in the first conversation that I had with James Williams at Cannabis Manufacturers Guild, he said there's kind of a conflict in there because a lot of companies want to sell more. They want to sell more packaging at a higher price. So they may create a secondary package just to make that extra revenue. But that's going to start to hurt companies over the next couple of years, especially when it becomes apparent that it is waste, that it isn't premium. And so the companies, in theory, will get more business to offset that premium price in the box just by talking about eliminating waste and being sustainable. The next one here is returnable use packaging. And I went into a store here in Colorado in Denver, uh, and uh, the store uh, had big jars of 
products in them. And you can bring your jars back and kind of squirt that in. That's, you know, face lotion, hand lotion. You see it, you know, it used to be more prevalent, I guess, in kind of bulk type places, which we got a little bit away from during COVID. But that's going to come back. And that is a very big trend that we're starting to see is where you have your container, you buy it one time, and then you take it back into the store and it's filled up. And we have talked about that a bit in cannabis, how it would be great to be able to do that. Now we would be, we would have to have, um, we would have to be, uh, thanks, here's a, here's a comment on here, appreciate that. You know, one, one thing that we would need to do for sure is we would have to have a manufacturer's license connected to the retail license because the way that the regulatory body, bodies work, you can't do that. But think about it in the craft beer industry, it happened there. So what you can do is you can buy let's say a growler at a at a, a craft beer you know brew pub take it home drink it bring the growler back in i mean you can do it with kegs too so think about that for the cannabis industry where eventually you'll be able to buy your container you'll be able to take the product out take the container back take it into into a dispensary they fill it up with the product put the necessary stamps on there and then you take it out now that's obviously going to take a lot of work on the regulatory side um, but that's going to save a lot of waste in terms of throwing cannabis packaging away. It's very prevalent within this industry, as all of you know, especially up in Canada with the, the big packages because of labeling requirements. Now, that will change over the next couple of years. So start to see that happen as well. Uh, the next thing here is upcycling. So upcycling is where you turn something into something else that you can use as opposed to throwing it all away. So think about that. The next time you buy something, and um, we've got a comment here. Yep, yeah, that's a good comment too. I appreciate that, what uh, Helping Hands and Boulder's doing. That's great. You bring your container back in. That's really a, a, a great thing to do. And we'll see that, you know, uh, as I mentioned a second ago. But in terms of the upcycling, what you can do is, oh, by the way, I'll respond to all these comments afterward. And I encourage any of you to put up any links that you can uh, when you're talking about uh, companies that are doing a good job with this, put those in here and I'll address them after this broadcast. So upcycling, you would buy a product and when you're thinking about throwing away, thinking, you know, what can I do with this? So, you know, there are many examples of what you can do where you can turn something into something else. So it takes a little bit of creativity, but it goes a long way. Uh, the next one is minimal packaging. So we've started to see a lot of companies that don't put a full package on there. So for example, that may be a bar of soap with a really small little label around it, a, a cardboard label around it with very minimal design on it. So that's not only minimal packaging, but it's minimal design. And for you, uh, those of you out here that are in the, let's say, label industry, and you're like, oh, we want to do big labels and bright labels, which is traditionally here in Colorado, what we did in the, the packaging you know, with cannabis is you know, bright, colorful labels. It's going to take a lot of creativity, a lot of innovation to get your brand under a very small piece of cardboard now. But that's what we need to do. We need to make the products be the star and not just the label. And I think that consumers understand that. They think that, well, I don't want to just be wowed by a flashy image. I actually want to know what the product is and why it's good for the environment, why it's good for me, you know, all those things that are making it truly sustainable. Uh, the next thing is custom packaging with mono materials. And what I mean by mono materials are a package that's just made out of one specific material. So a lot of times there'll be like a glass jar with a plastic top on it, and that just goes into the recycling bin. But you have to understand that unless those are separated, most jurisdictions don't have the capabilities to separate those out and recycle them. So when it gets to your local recycling you know, plant, if that ever gets there, it's going to go straight into the dumpster. Really is here. In the United States, we only recycle something like 8% of the, or 8% of what we recycle actually gets recycled. In Canada, I think it's 40%. I'm not quite sure about that, but it's very uh, similar to those, those percentages. And it's just because we don't have the capabilities. Doesn't mean that the consumers don't care about it. It's just that we're not set up to, to do that. So mono materials we'll see more of. So all cardboard, all glass, if you can get a lid on that's all glass, even all plastic would be better. 
Uh, it has to be cleaned. You know, it just has to be made out of one material. So think about that. Separate out what you do before you put it in to the dumpster. And we won't even have to think about that when we work with mono materials. Uh, the next one would be bioplastics. There's some tremendous work that's going on in terms of bioplastics. And on Monday, I will talk about a few companies that are creating bioplastics, like big companies that are working at one specifically is Bacardi. Uh, they're, they, you know, they're coming out with uh, with some alcohol bottles that are made out of bioplastics. Really cool stuff. And I'll review those on Monday. But the big, these bigger companies not only have a responsibility, but they have the pull and they have the branding, they have the marketing, and they actually can be the ones who can truly affect change on a global scale by investing in bioplastics. There's some amazing stuff going on. I really look forward to that this year. The next one is plantable packaging. So I don't know if you've seen this, but there are some, some, cool, plas uh, some cool packages. Let's say they're um, plants or seeds, and they are put in some type of plantable packaging that you just put the whole paper or the whole package down in the ground and water it, and it'll grow. We'll see a lot more plantable packaging coming up. And again, I encourage, I encourage you guys, if you know any companies that are doing some cool things in here, put them in here in the link down below, and I'll talk about them next week. Uh, the next thing is corrugated packaging. So think about this. Whenever there's a package that just folds over, there's a lot of tape that goes on there. And that's something that we don't think about much. You think about tape, you know, you pull it off, whatever that is. Well, that actually really always goes in the trash. So if packages can be made so that they tuck in and they're self-enclosing, which we're seeing a lot more of, we can do away with a simple thing like tape. But if you think about how much tape, uh, here's another here's another company you guys can notice, and we'll come back to that in the comments. Uh, thanks for that, Matt. Uh, if you think about all of the tape that we throw away, just that I throw away, it would be a huge ball. So just think about all of that, that all of us over the course of the year. Crazy, crazy to think about that. How much uh, packaging, just paper up, <laughs> plastic tape waste we just throw away. Uh, the next one would be, you know, I've seen some cool things throughout the, the, the year with QR codes or, you know, kind of smart packaging type of ideas where you can put a QR code on a very small label with on, let's say, a, a bottle of something, and then you can pull it up on your phone and you get all the information that you want there, which is really cool. It can be interactive. It can move. It can jump. You can do specials. So we're going to see a lot of new things happening in terms of that, the QR codes. A couple, couple companies are doing it now, but it needs to really be pushed forward. You don't need all of the information on a label and make it, make it big. You can have a very small QR code and you can get a much more interactive experience and you can get way deep into the brand. For example, you could change that message every month. So let's say it's a different strain. Let's say it's a different wine. Let's say it's you know a pairing. Amazing things you can be doing with QR codes to be able to get your brand out there. And think about it too. You could have interviews with founders on there on a website. You can do so much with QR codes that are not really being utilized. Uh, next thing is ecological design. We'll see a lot more eco design. We'll also see more aluminum. We'll see more soy and water-based ink. And once we start to see these things, if you combine all these things together, it starts to make a dent in all of that packaging waste. When I talked yesterday about the, you know, 80 million tons of uh, packaging waste, plastic packaging waste, and there's probably a lot more packaging, but that was plastic that I was talking about yesterday uh, that we throw away. We're gonna make a, start to make a big, big dent in all this stuff. And when you think about it, we are going through a big, big cultural transformation. You know, we here in these groups, they, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, trying to do something and educating people. And it's a, it's, a, it's a steep hill. And we've got a lot of work to do over the next coming years in terms of the mainstream. But there is a transformation. There is an awakening coming around. And I've seen it a lot over the nine, past nine months. And it helps to have all of you, um, you know, with your ideas. Keep sending those into the show because those give me more ideas on what to talk about to help and educate everybody out there. But from companies, what it's going to take is a big commitment 
a commitment to not only doing what's right, but to talking about it. Like I talked about yesterday, companies need to say, we are leading, we are step stepping up and we are doing a great job here. And we want you to know about it. It's not only good for, you know, branding, marketing, PR, it's great for the bottom line. You'll get more customers over the long term, short and long term, I, I would say now. And once the mainstream starts to, you know, accept that sustainability is part of just what they buy, not because it's sustainable, just because it's available, we're going to see it a lot more. And the companies that are transparent in what they're doing is what I, as I talked about yesterday, are going to have a huge advantage over the companies that aren't. The companies that aren't talking about sustainability or transparency, well, it's gonna look like they are they have something to hide. Possibly they do, possibly they don't, but I'm just saying the companies that are doing something should talk about it, even if it's 1% better every day. We've talked a lot about that in the show over the past you know, couple months. 1% better every day in one aspect of sustainability, and over the course of the year, it's something like 37% better. That's a lot of movement in this area. I'm going to um, address here a, a comment here uh, from Nisha thinking about plastic stretch wrap. Yep, that's uh, that's a big issue, and there's a um, there are some companies that do away with that. So you may have a package that covers everything, and you don't need the stretch wrap. In fact, I was on a, a project here in California. I flew out a couple months ago, first time I flew since uh, March, and we were working on kind of a sustainable project, but the pallets were wrapped around and around and around five or six times with that saran wrap, which just goes in the trash. That's a very good point. Uh, th thank you for that. Um, here's a, a question here from Matt or, or a comment. I've heard some people using mushrooms as material. Another group using recycled plastic for motion cleanup. Yeah, that's a, that is a, a big a big part of it. I've got another comment here uh, from Raju. Yeah, Santa Packaging is doing a great job. They are, they are working with the uh, ocean uh, reclaimed plastic, and they're actually a partner of ours. We do work with, with uh, Santa Packaging here. This uh, Another comment here, uh, Nisha, would love to see a packaging coalition in the cannabis industry to move the needle on packaging. That's a great idea. And if that's public accountability, then you can start that group, and I would be happy to join in with you, as I'm sure any of us here in the business would be, but that's a, a great comment. You know, how do you move the needle forward, especially in this in the cannabis industry, when typically it's very you know close to the vest and people don't share a lot. It's changing a lot, and my hope is that this year it will truly come out of the shadows and we can address some big issues like this because we have a tremendous opportunity as a relatively young industry to do what's right, as I've said. So thank you for your comments. I'll respond to all these comments after the fact. And if you have any more links, please put them up in, in here. We can spread them and I'll talk about them next week. Uh, thank you for your time and welcome to 2021. It's a new year and I'm looking forward to uh, spending time with all of you. It's gonna be a great 2021. Thanks a lot. And if any of you wanna be on this show, happy to uh, include you send me a direct message and we can get you on the schedule. Thanks a lot.